quality of the synology for men, of course, it's very valuable to know it. And I will start speaking about surgical treatment of the squamous cell cancer, uh, penile cancer. Uh, I wanted first to introduce photos and pictures, but then I decided that my colleagues would uh, use them. Um, and they did it uh, with so very nice pictures. Then I uh, decided that it's more important to uh, speak about the stages of treatment. There are a number of nosological forms in uh, oncourology when uh, uh, sticking to standards, uh, the stages of uh, follow-up, of surveillance, uh, of management of patients is a very important condition of success. Uh, and uh, uh, this approach is uh, used in treatment of uh, the penile cancer. And uh, my presentation uh, is maybe a little bit dull, but but uh, I tried to, to do it uh, according to good methodology, let's say, to understand that following the standard stage associated treatment is very uh, important for us. Another thing I would like to say at the beginning, uh, there are a number of oncological diseases that are associated with a uh, a low level of incidence. Uh, it's good news for population, but for specialists it's a problem because we speak always about accumulating experience, it's difficult to make conclusions. Uh, with such groups, such cohorts, it's difficult to uh, stick to the principles of evidence-based uh, med medicine. And this is uh, typical of uh, the penile cancer, the situation. Uh, I mentioned that if we speak about systemic treatment of B9 changes uh, of balanus, for example, we have nothing, almost nothing proved. Uh, even if we speak about local methods that are included into the standards, regretfully, the level of evidence is uh, three, uh, not better than three. We are lacking randomized uh, big uh, uh, trials. Uh, usually we speak about small groups, retrospective uh, uh, studies, and the results of such studies uh, uh, are the foundations for our treatment. We base ourselves on data analysis as well. Regretfully, level of evidence is ready low, but the algorithm that was uh, uh, approved should be ab uh, observed, and then the results will be better. Other general specificities in treatment of the penile cancer, uh, always. And uh, our head, uh, we, uh, now patient think about preserving the organ uh, as mu much as possible. For men, it's very important from a uh, psychological point of view, and uh, uh, it's like 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 uh, losing life to lose this organ. It's psychological trauma. That's why uh, many patients avoid seeing the doctor. Uh, and do not uh, tell anybody about such changes, and they approach the doctor quite late. late. But uh, if we consider statistics, the majority, they come to the doctors on time, and uh, only uh, not quite a big percent have uh, uh, metastasis after treatment. But uh, the system we're discussing very important for uh, uh, male. And uh, again, because of this, many of them approach the doctor quite, quite quickly. And on the other side, it's oncological process. So it should be a radical uh, program. And it's kind of scales, uh, organ preserving, or organ saving approach, and radicality on the other side of the scales. It's the main, main topic uh, of all the schemes, and uh, very important to remember about 
this at all stages, all methods uh, uh, that we evaluate at different stages. Uh, they are based on oncological uh, on reasons uh, and not uh, uh, only on positive uh, margin, surgical margin, uh, recurrence, and so on, so forth. We think, first of all, about general uh, uh, survival, and uh, part of them could have more organ preserving approach uh, uh, than others and then it seems at the beginning of course we think about preservation of erectile and uh, functions cosmetic effect uh, and uh, urination as well should be remembered about and radicality the last thing and uh, uh, the stage uh, adjusted approach that is approved in all guidelines is, is in the focus of our attention Attention. And those principles are uh, very important when selecting the tactics for each patient. And this stage adjusted approach is based uh, on the clinical stages, uh, stage of differentiation and histological type of tumor. And in future, uh, probably we'll take into uh, a call, we will think about HPV association and could be uh, positive prognostic of positive prognostic value. But as of today, this connection is uh, correlation uh, uh, for penile cancer does not give does not give us clinical recommendation. There we sh split them into associated and not. We could ex, uh, ex uh, uh, we, we could base uh, we could think about head and neck or a pharyngeal. Uh, uh, cancer in this context where they have new approaches uh, now on the basis of this uh, uh, division associated or not with HPV. Uh, so what is uh, the main it depends when patient has come. When we have a low risk recurrency tumor at zero and five clinical stages, it's possible to preserve uh, the balanus or organ or resection of the balanus uh, and um, uh, on the other uh, hand high uh, when we have uh, see tumors of high risk of progression or recurrency, the balanus should be amputated and uh, partial uh, amputation of the penis should be thought uh, about. When at third clinical stage, when it's metastases and such uh, clinical metastatic nodes, uh, amputation is proposed with uh, removal of original metastases. Uh, and for the uh, stage, it's palliative, it's treatment, uh, because uh, we are lacking high effective uh, um, uh, medications. It's usually patients uh, uh, for whom we have to carry out uh, clinical protocols. It's uh, symptoms, uh, removal of uh, the tumor, normalization of urination, and a resolution of other problems a patient has. Uh, in progression. So, clinical stage zero one. Uh, the, uh, we have mentioned this. I would like to stress is uh, that uh, curat and Bowen disease, it's carcinoma in situ, it's cancer. We can't consider them to be uh, pre cancer diseases. Uh, and, uh, uh, if we uh, with, with the tactics we have, with the prognosis we have, with the criteria we have uh, uh, regarding such pathologists, when we are dealing with it, it's not feasible. It's not reasonable. In 15 uh, percent, up to 15 uh, percent invasion will develop. Approximating carcinoma in situ, so it requires particular uh, protocols of treatment. Um, 0A, this is TAN0M0, zero zero, non-invasive localized uh, squam cell cancer, as the most favorable out of the majority of uh, the majority of histological penile cancers. Now, clinical assessment, which is very important, this is non-palpating 
uh, lymph nodes. And I'd like to say that uh, with patients with high BMI, uh, palpation is not sufficient. We need to do ultrasound as well for the clinical assessment of lymph node condition. So uh, P0, the, or, uh, that actually means that there are no metastatic uh, lesions and uh, no remote metastasis. This is uh, M0. And of course, these particular patients should be proposed local organ sparing treatment, the options of which are quite multiple. We have uh, surgical options like surgical incision, which of course is related to major problems, for example, cosmetic outcomes and deformity of the balanus, also impaired fu function or if uh, there are huge uh, lesions. So what Sergei has already mentioned about the MOH method, as a matter of fact, in the Russian Federation, we don't use such methods in relation to huge problem as uh, coordination between uh, surgeon and uh, morphologist, as well as the very prolonged manipulation and g huge number of difficulties, organizationally speaking, and a great uh, number of uh, difficulties related to frozen biopsy. And also uh, testing at the uh, operating table with uh, the uh, opportunity to understand uh, the penetration into layers. So surgical incision, as a matter of fact, is not the uh, choice for this particular uh, population of patients. Nonetheless, there is a group of patients who may benefit from it. Uh, it's the problem related to the staging and verification of this problem. And of course, it is possible only with the incision biopsy. This is another very important aspect, which we have already mentioned slightly, uh, because all the patients with the changes in the balanus, they must undergo incision biopsy. Of course, not all of them just, uh, but the patients with very long conservative treatment and certain cha the changes in the balanus does not give any clinical effect or the disease progresses at the background of treatment. So the time uh, threshold or barrier is three weeks. If, for example, we uh, treat balanopastitis adequately within one month and we do not see any improvement, then incision biopsy is something that we do recommend. Incision biopsy, I would like to stress it because it's the only biopsy that allows us histological to do histological verification and staging of disease, uh, assess the invasion level, uh, then we shall understand whether it is clinical uh, zero or clinical one or two stage. So it's utterly important to do incision biopsy uh, according to these uh, indications. In our practice, we can also see that it's uh, something that is quite rarely proposed to patients and cytology is performed. Also, they perform sort of superficial superficial uh, tests and or superficial uh, biopsies, which is absolutely not relevant for the complete diagnose, diagnose. So for surgical full incision, there is a group of patients with a smaller size of lesions. And of course, it's quite reasonable to incise them completely in order to verify uh, the diagnosis and do the staging. So these smaller changes uh, in the balanus of smaller in, uh, size, where at the uh, stage of biopsy, we can resect them fully. I suppose they are optimal for this uh, first point, I mean, surgical correction of the penile cancer. Pharmaceutical treatment for pharmacotreatment. These are two creams um, which they which demonstrated their efficacy in a number of studies and at this stage of disease they can be used with high efficacy. Laser uh, treatment is quite possible in this group of patients, but it must be it must be laser ablation. In the guidelines, it's clearly stated that photodynamic treatment is not possible. It's quite restricted. And if we speak about verified cancer of the penis, then it must be ablation. 
we should actually uh, cause coagulation necrosis in the use of that this or that uh, laser, but usually we recommend CO2 laser. Cryoablation can also be resorted to, especially in uh, uh, KRAT uh, erythroplasia. As uh, several studies uh, demonstrated uh, good efficacy and opportunity of using this method in this category of patients. At the same time, we do understand that first and foremost, in this situation, we are striving to get, get a good functional and cosmetic outcome. Oncological, first and foremost, of course, but the um, other two if, uh, outcomes are also very important. So that's why conservative or pharmaco treatments are uh, uh, preferable here, or some ablation methods um, can be resorted to in bigger sizes of lesions and also in the ineffective use of the pharmacotherapy. So this is yet another quite important problem that, unfortunately, when they use different methods of treatment, we can uh, get certain uh, relapses of, uh, of the main disease. And with this relapse, which again must be histologically verified and staged appropriately, with the absence of progression, we can do secondary intervention, uh, laser cryoablations, for example, and the use of uh, pharma, uh, pharma, uh, pharmaceuticals. Local treatment in clinical stage one. This is category T1A when you see invasion, uh, but without lymphovascular or perinervial invasion and with a very with a low grade when it's G3 or grade 1 or 2 and um, sarcomatoid tumors uh, should not be included here so in this quite positive so to say favorable situation these are just uh, an opportunity for us to do local treatment the standards also include At the same time, this treatment is wider. It can also uh, include balanus amputation and also more microscopic uh, surgery. And radiation therapy is quite possible. The majority of publications uh, say that it, the radiation therapy can be used in those patients where surgery is not applicable or who refuse to be operated on because of this pathology. We do understand that radiation therapy, as a matter of fact, is mainly directed over the organ sparing approach and also for good cosmetic outcomes and uh, functional uh, results as well. So once again, uh, here we have quite good positions of the surgical uh, therapy as well as the radiation therapy. Once again, I would like to stress that this choice can be made only on the basis of adequate histological staging. We can see here uh, that in order to get a good clinical stage, we must assess all the components and the histotype uh, should be assessed as well. Uh, TNM classification must be done as well as the uh, grade should be determined. So biopsy is utterly important here. This is what I talked about previously. The early forms of penile cancers can also relapse and they can demonstrate the positive uh, resection margin during surgery. So this situation, of course, uh, has a number of publications which should determine our strategy. In order to avoid the positive uh, resection margin, you need to step aside uh, two centimeters from the tumor margin, but that actually increases the area uh, of uh, or the surgical field and subsequently the surgical wound. So uh, patients with high grades, you can actually step aside one millimeter from the margin, but uh, with grade two, three, in fact, it's important to uh, have five millimeters from the tumor margin. And five millimeters is no difference from the two centimeter margin that we talked about previously. So this is something we should also take into account and all these 
guidelines must be observed while surgical um, correction of these malformations and also palliation and uh, uh, creams. We uh, must have uh, more access uh, of this pharmaceutical in the area of the tumor. So uh, the uh, local relapses they are different depending uh, on the method uh, of primary intervention. So in ablations, for example, it uh, uh, varies uh, within 47 percent to 6 percent uh, in the uh, balanus sparing surgeries. And if uh, there is balanus uh, resection, uh, it's uh, very low, um, below 2 percent. The more aggressive surgical approach you exercise, the uh, less there is um, actually uh, the fewer there are number of uh, relapses, but there are no other benefits. The organ sparing, in fact, uh, shows greater number of positive margins and greater number of relapses, but at the same time, the overall survival and uh, progression-free survival, in fact, is not significantly different according to this study. You can see that the overall survival uh, doesn't have statistically significant uh, differences among those where balanus was amputated and where organ sparing treatment was um, applied. Of course, this is a small uh, sampling, and uh, generally speaking, we don't have any randomization here. Uh, patients were different even according to the age groups, and the amputation was performed in a more advanced age patients, which is quite natural. Also, also, it was different in terms of the stage of disease. You can see that patients with more advanced uh, disease, they were more frequently within the group of patients where amputation was performed. Another problem of the organ sparing surgeries, this is the presence of micrometastasis. We cannot actually but take this into account. You can see that the risk of non-palpable metastasis, micrometastasis uh, of both zero uh, stage and one clinical stage is quite high, up to 16 percent. And at the same time, on the other hand, the surgical intervention within the uh, volume of preventative lymphadenectomy is very frequently related to very serious complications such as necrosis of the skin, lymphoria, edema of the lower limbs, infection complications. And uh, I should say that the choice of such strategy should definitely be very well grounded. So uh, at the moment, we don't have uh, significant evidence that shows us that the uh, groin uh, adrenal lymphadectomy uh, exercises any um, role for the survival rate. So for this category of patients of uh, with stage N0, the preventative groin uh, lymphadenectomy should not be performed. These patients, they are under dynamic uh, follow-up. And only if there is a clinical uh, um, picture, if it changes, if there are metastases into the regional lymph nodes, uh, they undergo a surgical intervention of more extended type. Now let's move on and talk about more advanced diseases, T1, T2. In terms of the volume, they can be actually merged within group 1, and the approaches are quite similar. And in terms of the TNM uh, category, this will be TNMB. The invasion uh, will be perineural uh, invasion, for example. And low uh, stage of uh, differentiation, grade 3, and sarcomatoid, sarcomatoid tumor. Uh, T2 and uh, no zero, and zero invasion, of, uh, including uh, sometimes invasion in uh, ureter, sometimes no, uh, uh, and T3 and OOMO invasion of covenous bodies, uh, including tunica, 
all Bugini, including invasion into Urethra, uh, it's, uh, but without metastatic invasion into uh, lymph nodes, which is decisive for treatment amputation of uh, a penis, for good control for those who, for whom surgery is not uh, possible, or who reject this approach, uh, radiation or uh, brachiotherapy is possible with uh, 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 some kind of uh, surgery later, a little bit of surgery, so some uh, scope of organ preserving treatment in this situation. Uh, this tactics uh, is uh, traumatic, and we should understand that radiation here is associated with the toxicity. So this choice should be discussed with the patient, including selection of therapy should be done out of two options. It could be done only through communication with the patients. Uh, Micrometastatic process is higher in this patient's 15 to 25 percent, and again, uh, there is same argument pro uh, against uh, uh, adenectomy, many side effects. Uh, we can propose signal uh, biopsy of signal um, signal uh, lymph nodes. Uh, uh, we should understand uh, that we can uh, get false negative results, more than 10 percent of cases, but. Uh, 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 if we speak about uh, lymphadectomy, but we use it and we uh, provide diagnosis for uh, such signal uh, lymph nodes. And for this second stage of disease, for this group, uh, uh, lymphadectomy is recommended for patients with a low differentiation of process after amputation and previous amputation. Uh, with some interruption is very important after some interruption because we evaluate the patient and the side effects, adverse events that could be there. When uh, the histology of G3 with low verification, pre pre uh, prevention lymphadenectomy should be done, uh, maybe off signal uh, nodes biopsy. And uh, uh, 3A and 3B treatment that's here we have a regional clinical uh, metastatic process, uh, uh, metastasis could be any category T1 uh, to T3, and again, uh, uh, metastasis is detectable. So we palpate it, uh, uh, they are, are shifted from the initial position, and next stage it's uh, bigger uh, numbers of involved. Uh, uh, lymph nodes not higher than 2 and CN2. Uh, this uh, uh, side, uh, uh, by uh, side, uh, double side uh, lymph nodes of the same kind, three or more uh, involved on one side or a bilateral situation could be. But it's without extra nodal extension. It should be limited by a uh, lymphatic node itself. And what I mentioned, amputation of the penis is necessary. The necessary volume, necessary scope should be detected. And after that, three weeks uh, antibacterial therapy to avoid inflammation and uh, in uh, inflammation, lymphadenopathic. This is uh, if we do not see reduction of lymphatic nodes during this time, then uh, growing a lymphadenectomy should be done bilateral or distant radiation uh, for those who can't go through the surgery. <coughs> if such patients have low level of differentiation. Uh, even in this case, we have uh, to apply uh, prevention on uh, lymph and that anadectomy uh, because of the threat of uh, metastatic process development. Even 
uh, it could be at uh, a minimal in minimal scope in uh, Scandinavian countries, Germany, UK. They try to concentrate uh, such patients in the centers that are dealing in the, with this problem in particular. This concentration centers, of course, the. Uh, can uh, use uh, potential uh, red oncological uh, potential radiation, chemo, surgery. On the other hand, accumulation of experience uh, in the situation when such patients uh, 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 visit the doctors quite often. They could be often, more often, see the doctors for curation. Results could be better. Taking into account that uh, the incidence is low, uh, so uh, at uh, lower stages, uh, it's feasible, it's advisable to refer such patients to specific special clinics uh, uh, when it's uh, on oncogenicity of uh, Maybe uh, ovary glands, for example, it's same, same, uh, same uh, situation. Uh, long diagnostic process. Uh, we mentioned uh, that patients come uh, very late. We see quite often uh, when they are being verified very long, and this chain uh, that uh, uh, just uh, people uh, people just lose uh, time and they fail to get 100% of treatment that should be based.